If you're a Libra and you've been hesitant about making that big purchase, hold off for another couple of days. Don't forget, your moon is in Sagittarius. Not the time for reckless spending. You Virgos can expect an untimely death or perhaps a tragic dismemberment for someone very close to you. Pisces, it's a good time to pull the plug on that machine that's been keeping your daughter alive for the past six months. If you're a Taurus, see your florist. And if you're a Gemini like me, well, you can expect the unexpected. I'm Joyce Wilson, your astro... Thank you, Joyce. With us today, Judy Morton from the San Diego Wild Animal Preserve. Uh, Judy's been a guest on the show many times in the past. It's always been an absolutely delightful segment. Welcome, Judy. Hello. And what have you got for us today? Well, today I've brought an Australian gerbil. It's one of the few that we've been able to raise in captivity. Uh -huh. uh, he's tame, isn't he? He won't bite? Oh, no, he's real friendly. Uh, okay. They're very lovable. Yeah, no. His name is Oscar. Oh, hello, Oscar. <laughs> hello, Oscar. Uh, I'd like to get one of those for my kids. Oh, they would make great pets, except that they, they really do need a wild surrounding. Uh -huh. Well, Oscar yes. is absolutely irresistible. Now, I understand, Judy, that you've got another surprise for us. Yes, that's right, Frank. Now, this next fellow may not be small, but he certainly is cute. <laughs> At least I think so. He's backstage right now. I have to go get him. Okay, okay? go ahead and do that. Right back. You know, this is always one of my favorite segments of the show because I never know quite what they're going to be bringing out here. Oh, 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 look what they are bringing out here. Oh, well, Hello there. Dino. Hello, oh, Dino. Oh, my gosh, he is huge. Yes, but don't let Dino's looks fool you. He's really gentle as a lamb. Uh -huh. As a result of being raised in captivity. Well, that's why we're able to bring him out here. Uh-huh. Is, is this a rare animal? Yes, it is, Frank. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're having trouble mating him. You mean you're having trouble finding a female for Dino? <laughs> well, no, not really. We've matched Dino up with several likely candidates on a number of occasions. The trouble is that all efforts at reproduction have been unsuccessful. Oh, I can hardly believe that. After all, Dino here may, may not be the handsomest suitor I've ever seen, but certainly a big gorilla like this. Well, we're not really sure yet what the trouble is with Dino. Uh, it could just be shyness, a natural reluctance, or even what we would call impotence. Impotence? Whoa! 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 Moscow in flames, missiles headed toward New York. Film at 11. Now, bring me the prisoners. Now, take him to be tortured. As for my American friend, the CIA thinks it can infiltrate the mountain of a Dr. Crud. You can't scare me, you slant-eyed yellow bastard. Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything but that! No! In the past year, over 800,000 Americans have died. Despite millions of dollars of research, death continues to be our nation's number one killer. Hello, I'm Henry Gibson, speaking to you on behalf of the United Appeal for the Dead. Although so far there is no known treatment for death's crippling effects, still everyone can acquaint himself with the three early warning signs of death. One, rigor mortis. Two, a rotting smell. Three, occasional drowsiness. It is also important to know what to do when you die. One, do not attempt to drive a car. Two, do not operate heavy machinery. Third, do not talk. Your past contributions to this cause have already worked wonders. Many deserving families have been helped. Right now, I'd like you to meet the Hefsteaders. Three years ago, our Johnny died. We thought that there was no hope, but then we discovered the United Appeal for the Dead. They showed us that despite Johnny's handicap, he could still be a useful member of our family and the community. Our United Appeal for the Dead caseworker showed us that the absence of life from Johnny's body didn't have to mean his absence from our daily lives. We realized the constant joy that could be ours 
as we were able to include him in our family activities. The United Appeal for the Dead turned misery into happiness. We have them to thank for our family's newfound togetherness. This is Henry Gibson saying, please give generously when death knocks at your door. Joey, we have something here for our special visitors. Would you like to have it? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Sure. You ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir. I've never been up in a plane before. You ever seen a grown man naked? Do you want me to check the weather, Clarence? No, why don't you take care of it? Joey, you ever hang around the gymnasium? We'd better get back now, Joey. No, Joey can stay here for a while if you'd like. Could I? OK, if you don't get in the way. Yeah, after the war, I just wanted to get as far away from things as possible. So Elaine and I joined the Peace Corps. We were assigned to an isolated tribe, the Malumbos. They'd never seen Americans before. It was really a challenge during the year introducing them to our Western culture. At first, they didn't know what to think of us, but soon we gained their trust. Have you ever been in a, in a Turkish prison? All right. Now we know what we're up against. Every passenger on this plane will have fish for dinner. We'll become violently ill in the next half hour. Just how serious is it, Doctor? Extremely serious. Starts with a slight fever, dryness of the throat. As the virus penetrates the red blood cells, the victim becomes dizzy. Begins to experience an itching, a rash. From there, the poison goes to work on the central nervous system, causing severe muscle spasms, followed by the inevitable grueling. At this point, the entire digestive system collapses, accompanied by uncontrollable flatulence, until finally the poor bastard is reduced to a quivering, wasted piece of jelly. some unpleasant facts? No. All right. Unless I get all those people to a hospital quickly, I can't even be sure of saving their lives. Now, is there anyone on board who can land this plane? Well... No, no one I know of. He gets so excited when new people are here. Are you a pilot yourself? No, I'm in. Ah! A training program. It's unbelievable. Just unbelievable. How many times I've warned those people about food inspection? You'd think after all these years, someone would listen to them. Oh, well, airport management, the FAA, and the airlines. Oh, cheats and liars. All right, let's get out of here. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Doctor, I've checked everyone. Mr. Stryker's the only one. What flying experience have you had? Oh, I flew single-engine fighters in the Air Force, but this plane has four engines. It's an entirely different kind of flying, altogether. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different kind, kind of flying. flying. I know, but this guy doing the flying has no airline experience at all. He's a menace to himself and everything else in the air. Yes, birds, too. OK, OK, he's a terrible risk, but what other choice have we got? That's the whole story there, Rex. Everything we know. All right, Steve, let's face a few facts. As you know, I flew with this man Stryker during the war. He's going to have enough on his mind without worrying about those times when, uh, when things weren't so good. Uh, right now, things aren't so good. Let me tell you something, Steve. Ted Stryker was a top-notch squadron leader. Long time ago. Rex, I want you to get on the horn and talk that guy down. Now, you're going to have to let him get the feel of that airplane on the way. And you'll have to talk him onto the approach. So help me, you'll have to talk him right down to the ground. Very well. How are the passengers doing? I won't deceive you, Mr. Stryker. We're running out of time. Surely there must be something you can do. I'm doing everything I can. Now stop calling me Shirley. Oh, rats! Lost number four. 
What happened, Ted? What went wrong? The oil pressure. I forgot to check the oil pressure. When Kramer hears about this, the shit's gonna hit the fan. Watch that oil temperature. What the hell's he doing up there? Stewardess, hmm. how soon do we land? Oh, it won't be long now. Try not to worry. Frank. Hello, Miss Decker. Hello. I'm Captain Frank Brevin. I understand you had a pretty rough time. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Cigarette? Yes, I know. Well, do you feel up to any questions? I'll try. Where were you when all this happened? I was right here at my desk working. And when was the first time you noticed something was wrong? Well, when I first heard the shot, and as I turned, Jim fell. Uh, he's a teller, Frank. A Jim Fells a teller? No, Jim Johnson. Who's Jim Fell? Well, he's the auditor, Frank. He had the flu, so Jim filled in. Phil who? Uh, Phil did, and he's the night watchman, Frank. <laughs> Fully Phil had been here. Right, now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Twice came in and shot the teller and Jim Fell. No, he only shot the teller, Jim Johnson. Fell is ill. OK, then after he shot the teller, you shot twice. No, I only shot once. Uh, twice is the hold-up man. Then I guess I did shoot twice. Well, so now you're changing your story. No, I shot twice after Jim fell. You shot twice and Jim fell? No, Jim fell first, and then I shot twice once. Well, who fired twice? Once. Now, he's the owner of the tire company, Frank. OK. Now, once is the owner of the tire company, and he fired twice. Then twice shot the teller once. Twice. And Jim fell, and then you fired twice. Once. OK. All right, that'll be all for now, Miss Decker. Now, we'll need you to make a formal statement down at the station. Oh, of course. You've been very helpful. We think we know how he did it. Oh, how he couldn't have done it. He hasn't been in for weeks. Well, thank you again, Mr. <laughs> weeks. Saul Weeks. He's the controller, Frank. <laughs> Prusing, move closer, slowly. All right, that's it. This is the approximate distance the two men were apart when the shots were fired. Now, McBean, you're going to be the teller. Prusing, you're Ralph twice. The tape indicates the path the bullet took. All right. Hold up, man enters, demands money, and fires. I spent most of the afternoon trying to determine the possible angles from which the bullets might have been fired. Reenactment of a crime in this way can be a helpful tool in a criminal investigation. Teller had his back turned, and then the gunman fired. Hmm, a ricochet. After several hours, I had some interesting theories, but still nothing conclusive. When my boss called, I gave him the information, but I knew I needed more answers. Excuse me. Frank! I'm glad you're here. What do you got, Ed? Uh, nothing so far. Nobody's seen or heard anything. A ransom note? Yes, the butler found it. It was tied to this window and thrown into the rock garden. I sent the note to the lab and demanding one million dollars. Why would the lab demand a million dollars? The kidnappers made the demand, Frank. Yeah. Oh, hi, Frank. I'm uh, glad you're here. This is a tough one. What do we got? One scared lady. A couple of hoods beat up on her real good. Did she say anything? No, nothing. Same M.O. as the others. Right. Where is she? Right over there. 
Oh, Frank. It looks pretty bad. I'm Sergeant Drevin, Jill. I know this may not be the right Frank. thing. Frank, not that bad. That's her over there. Sorry, madam. Jill? I'm Captain Drevin. Cigarette? Yes, it is. Well. See the girl over there? When she leaves, put a tail on her. He is ready. Thank you. Come again. Ah, uh, there we are, sir. Um, I'll just buff this down for you. Shoot. Billy, electrostatic particles are created by an imbalance of electrons. The resulting charge is what we scientists call static electricity. Gee. It's, it's just like when your mom takes a dress out of the dryer, puts it on, and it, and it clings to every supple curve and soft round... <coughs> oh, hi, Frank. Uh, why don't you run along now, Billy? Next week, don't forget to bring in those magazines you found under your father's bed. Okay, Mr. Olson. Bye. <laughs> Ah, you're right on time, Lamekins. Make yourself a drink, baby. No, thanks, Dutch. Who are you, and how did you get in here? I'm a locksmith, and I'm a locksmith. Hi, Ed. Oh, hi, Frank. Excuse me. Yeah? Uh, Drebin here, give me a Pete Prusing. Uh, tell him I like the final report on Martin and Sally Decker. Right. Looks like we got a new champ, huh? Well, looks like I can get back to reading the sport pages now. Speaking of sports pages, I see they're bringing your friend Martin in now. You think you're a big man, Drebin, but I'm telling you I'm gonna beat this rat. Don't count on that, Martin. Looks like you and your cohorts will be doing your boxing up to the state Bill prison from now on. <laughs> Another exciting story from the files of Police Squad. Do not let your American curiosity lead you into trouble, Mr. Rivers. You are a guest here only because it serves our purposes. I suggest that during your stay, it would be wise to keep to your own affairs. Good day. Michael Baumann, my good morning, listen. What did you say to him? Nothing. I just told him I'd put his name on the Montgomery Ward mailing list. I'm sorry. He's just a little tired from the trip. I normally not, wouldn't say... Your attitude is being noted, Mr. Rivers. If that was your idea of being an ambassador, we're headed for a lot of trouble. Have you found out where Dr. Flamand is being kept? Here, this is one of our most popular items. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. Yeah. We do not know where they are keeping Dr. Flamand, only that they are forcing him to build a new weapon. What are my instructions? Here, here, try this. This will make you very popular at social gatherings. Go tonight to the valley. Here, use this ticket. 
you will meet the leader of the resistance, a man known as the Torch. Until then, wait at the Howard Johnson's. It's on the corner of the Fiorestrasse and Goebbelsplatzen. Good luck, kind sir, and God be with you. Wait. You dropped your phony dog poo. What phony dog poo? Souvenirs, novelties, party tricks. Souvenirs, novelties. I'm glad to see you. I've been here 20 minutes already. Nick, I've tried everything. The embassy, the German government, the consulate. I even talked to the UN ambassador. It's no use. I just can't bring my wife to orgasm. Gee, that's a shame, Martin. Well, have you tried one of these? Oh, well, thanks. I'll give it a whirl. Now, listen, Martin. I'm getting a little worried about this place. I mean, I don't even think they've ever even heard of a trial. All I know is, after we left the cafe last night, I met a girl. Then later at the ballet, she's sitting all alone. And then all of a sudden, I see this guy who's got a gun at her head. And he's looking like he's gonna kill her. And he might have, if I hadn't stepped in. Now, there's gotta be someone you can call that can straighten this whole mess out. Look. I figure they gotta let you out for your concert Friday night. They're beaming it live by satellite to 85 countries. Now you just relax and remember, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. It is a hospital, mein General. What is the condition of Sergeant Kruger? Yes, I see. Well, let me know if there's any change in his condition. He's dead. They short out the blanket and make the sheets burn. Is your heart filled with pain? Will you come back again? Shop at Macy's and love me tonight. You take the head, I'm taking the back. That's a plan, Russ. Forget the plan. I'm giving the orders here. Now to shut up and give me the back half. All right. Be an asshole. Can you see the generator? Yes, it's over there, behind the feed bin. All right, let's go. But we've got to hurry. <laughs> Mon dieu. Ooh, ooh. Nigel? Ooh. You okay? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Ooh. What's the hurry? Why are we in such a bloody rush? Oh. I just wanted to stop to take a ooh, rest. There's no more time. We've got to take off now. I will not leave without my daughter. Listen, old chef, in a few minutes it'll be dawn, and then we'll just be sitting ducks to their anti-aircraft guns. Wait! There they are!
We have placed the Queen's security in the hands of Police Squad, a special division of the Police Department. I'm represented here today by Lieutenant Frank Drebber. Honor. Protecting the safety of the Queen is a task that's gladly accepted by police squad. For no matter how silly the idea of having a Queen might be to us, as Americans we must be gracious and considerate hosts. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Drebin. Of course, we all have a stake in seeing that this portion of the Queen's American Goodwill Tour is completed. you have here, Mr. Ludwig. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Most of the objects in this room I have collected over a period of many years. Gainsborough, Ming, vases, priceless. They are objects which I feel reflect my personality, like the Japanese fighting fish. Beautiful, graceful, elegant. Yet, single-minded of purpose and deadly when it finds what it wants. Uh, this uh, particular one, is valued at over $20,000. A luxury item, to be certain, but as you can see, I am a man who appreciates the finer things in life. Oh, this, this is a rare samurai pen, a gift from Emperor Hirohito. Unbreakable, impervious to everything but water. Its value is beyond estimation. That's fascinating. Mm. But I'm sure you didn't pay me this visit to hear a lecture on fine art, Lieutenant. To what do I owe the honor? I'm investigating the attempted murder of one of your dock workers. A man named Nordberg, uh, a police officer. He's still alive, then? Uh, he was shot six times. Fortunately, the bullets missed every vital organ, and the salt water preserved him until he was found. Uh, so they were able to... Uh, so they were able to get him to the hospital in time. Yes, he's in the intensive care ward at Our Lady of the Worthless Miracle. Well, this certainly comes as a shock to me, Lieutenant. But as you know, I am not the kind of man who takes this type of thing lightly. And there is no room in my organization for any type of criminal activity. Look out there. A vast commercial development built by me. Do you have any idea what was out there just five years ago? Yeah! You bet you do. Orange groves, acres of them, as far as the eye could see. But now, of course, that land is able to generate ten times the amount of profit per square foot. Are you all right, Lieutenant? Here, let me get you some Kleenex. Uh, has this officer, uh, what's his name, uh, Norberg, been able to um, tell you anything? Uh, well, of course, uh, he hasn't been able to tell us a thing uh, so far. But as soon as he regains uh, consciousness, we'll uh, see if he can still play the guitar. I beg your pardon? Uh, I've taken up too much of your time already. I'd like to look at your employment records now and speak to someone in personnel, if you don't mind, of course. Of course. You've been very cooperative. I'll make a note of that in my report. My pleasure. Nice beaver. Thank you. 
I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. Twenty million deposited on Manny Bank Zurich upon proof of Queen's death. President promised to implement whatever recommendations I make. Why, that's wonderful. Then you're going to deliver the speech that you told me about last week? Oh, yes, every word of it. I would have given it tonight, but another guest there made such a ruckus, I don't believe anyone would have heard me. Hey, Al. Ken. Look at this. I found this in the wastebasket. Hey. That's a pretty nice clock. wonder why they threw it out. Problem because it's four minutes too slow. Here, let me fix it. There. I'm sure you'll find love, Frank. I already have one. It's from the lady. Go to her, Frank. Go on. I'll see you in the morning. Excuse me. Pardon me. Oh, sorry. Well, this is not easy to say. I'm lonely, I'm lost, I need someone to hold, to love. Frank. Over here. Well. Oh, I'd better go. This was a mistake. I don't even know why I came here. I was hoping you'd be happy, that you'd have someone. I'm single. I, I love being single. I haven't had this much sex since I was a Boy Scout leader. I mean, at the time, I was dating a lot. <laughs> Frank, I'm telling you, we've got no business doing this. All we've got is some dock pass and your hunch. You mark my words, Ed, that Hopsburg is up to something right up to his pretty important shirt collar. Couldn't have picked a better day for it. 
This fog will keep us concealed all the way over to Habsburg's warehouse. That's not fog, Frank. The number two engine's on fire. They're trying to put it out. All right, let's run through this one more time. At exactly 3.15, Nordberg will cut the power lines, knocking out the alarms. Yeah, right. Nordberg? Yeah, got it. I'll be in the van waiting for your signal. Are you all wired up? Yeah, right. So when you hear me say, I love it, you guys move in. Check. Ready, Frank? The water's over there, Frank. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. what they did to Dr. Meinheimer. You okay, Dr. Meinheimer? Uh, 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 that's okay. <laughs> Don't try to talk. I just can't take this anymore. Garbage like you just makes me sick. And? Okay? I'm and? just John Q. Public now. It's just you and me. Mono a mono. And I'll teach you to pick on a helpless invalid. All right. All right, he's had enough. Somebody help the captain. We've got to get to that press club dinner. This way. Jesus, guys, at me. So instead of spending $2.5 billion on research into nuclear waste disposal, the federal government, for only $500 million, or the cost of one B-1 bomber, could reduce the world's solar panel by 90%. As Albert Einstein once said... Hey, hey, come on, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! For God's sake, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! That the government wake up! I'll get the lights! ...effective national energy plan. Now, to elaborate on point 102... Here, read this. It's an emergency. His strong, manly hands probed every crevice of her silken femininity. Their undulating bodies writhing in sensual rhythm as he thrust his purple-headed warrior into her quivering mound of love pudding. All right, listen up, everyone. I want you to calmly file towards the exits. That's it, that's it. Nobody run, just walk. Single file, that's it. Now, if we just stay calm, no one is going to be harmed by the huge bomb that's going to explode any minute. <laughs> It's a cookbook! It's a cookbook! I want a world where Frank Jr. and all the Frank Juniors can sit under a shade tree, breathe the air, swim in the ocean, and go into a 7-Eleven without an interpreter. I want a world where I can eat a 
mercy on her without getting sick. I want a world where the Democrats will put somebody up there worth voting for. I may not get there with you, but most of all, I want a world where I can wake up each morning with this woman whom I love. See this. We're testing out a prototype for a new anti carjacking device. I think we're gonna get a chance to see how it works. Go on now. Get out. No. Get out. No. Don't make me. We call it the Denver Jock Strap. Slash McKirk. Meet Tanya Peters. Wait a minute. Don't I know you from somewhere? I smelled cop on him the minute I saw him. Uh, I get that all the time. The underwear ads played everywhere. Are you saying you're not a cop? Well, yeah. Well, it's good enough for me. Me too. I'm fine. All right. I'm glad that's all cleared up. You're walking along the street, or you're at a party. There he is. Go. 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 Excuse me. Isn't that snot on your shoe? Snot? Oh, Austin! Oh. 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 Gotta be here someplace. I'll stay here. You check the wings. This could be the start of something big. There's no... Oh, no. Not him again. Please, God. Who knows what's written in that magic book? And when a lover you discover at the gate, my friend, invite him in without a second look. You're watching the sand, count your mind. We're here to prevent a disaster. You're too late for that.